Greetings and welcome to Flavorful Eats. Today we have uh, BJ mm -hmm. on my right. We have Chef Keith on my left. Mike Gowing on my left. And Chef Claude McHale, everybody knows in Acton. <laughs> welcome to the show today. We have an interesting amalgamation of um, uh, flavors. We're starting off. We're making. We're starting off with the soji cake. That's our dessert, and then we are going to be making an idli, a, a pongal, and a very nice drink. So with that, we get BJ to start with our uh, soji cake. Yes. Yes. I put the power on. Perfect. I'm going to start with some milk. Mm -hmm. So we're heating up the milk and melting up the butter. Correct. Yes. That's what I like. A lot of butter. A lot of butter. Yes. That's why everyone loves it. <laughs> and sugar too? Uh, yes, yes, it'll be a good idea to just melt them all together. A lot of sugar. Yes, that was one cup of sugar and two cups of milk. You just wait for it to melt. And then in the meantime, he's going to be trying to mix the dry ingredients. Yes, so one cup of desiccated coconut. Or powdered coconut. Or powdered oh. coconut. Semolina or mm -hmm. suji. Mm -hmm. One cup. One cup of flour. One cup of flour. I like adding a little bit of salt in my dessert, do you? Yes. So we'll do a pinch of salt too. Always a pinch. Always a pinch. It never hurts, right? No. Mm. And then to that, the two teaspoons of baking powder I think you're gonna add, right? Yes. And and and, and uh, he's aerating the flour so we get a nice, because we're having eggless, so we don't really have much, uh, eggs normally would add more character to, yes? Yeah. Uh, here we're um, not, um, so he's just going to aerate it, but with the use of his... Why am I talking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to give you some good mix. Make sure everything's evenly distributed. Very good, yes. And, and aerated. Add, yes. And you want... Uh, yes, flavoring. some cardamom. Some elaichi. Very good. A little more than half a teaspoon. And for good luck. Oh, yes. And we're turning that into cupcakes. So we have the cupcake cavities all filled up and ready. Yes. And uh, just waiting for this. Let's see if you're happy with it. I'm just waiting for the butter to melt here yes. a little longer. It's a lot of butter to melt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Besides the flavor, it adds moisture to that mm -hmm. uh, to the dish too, right? So especially there's no eggs in there. Anything you add butter to, you improve it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Secrets of restaurant cooking: butter and salt. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> When they say love, it's really butter. Yeah. <laughs> now, can you do this recipe with ghee? Yes, oh, absolutely, nice. absolutely. That's awesome. Uh, you know, almost any Indian thing with ghee just tastes as, you know. So good. Yes, I, uh, I did make that with ghee before. Mm. Oh, right, so Keith, you wanna go on with what you are doing next? Because uh, Yeah, we're so we're waiting on that. Um, we're just gonna, so I'm excited because we get to make pongo. And so pongal is a, a kind of a South Indian breakfast. Um, and so what we're going to do today is, is just kind of go through that process. It's really easy, it's really quick, and it's really one of my favorite things ever. All right. So uh, with pongal, very simple step. Uh, this is something I actually make in my house, mm -hmm. and I have this at least two times a week because it's just wonderful. It's comfort food. It's comfort food. And besides comfort, it's the healthiest thing you can eat. It's uh, nutritious. It's got all the nutrition in it. Absolutely. Yes. So, so we're going to start with uh, some ghee in the bottom of the pan because what we want to do is we kind of, we want to get our spices nice and toasted first. Yes, absolutely. Um, a lot of times when you're cooking food from, from South Asia or the subcontinent, you toast spices in either a wet variety mm -hmm. or a dry variety. And of course I'm telling this to you, but <laughs> you know. No, no, this is for my, for the audience, yeah. No, you know far too well. I mean, um, these the, the, are little things that we actually start off the children with also, because mm. you know, when you start to eat foods in the beginning, it's nice and soft, so you'd, they don't True. have teeth, so it's a good start for that. It's good for anything, somebody's sick. Yeah. It's perfect. Perfect. So we're gonna, we got and this And this is making for Mike. Oh. He's not sick. But Mike. I think he'd love it. I lo so I always say this is a lot like kind of a South Indian variety of, of like porridge or oatmeal without mm -hmm. the oats. Um, it has that kind of like textural quality to it. Um, if you were kind of talking to somebody from the subcontinent who isn't familiar with Pongal, maybe they're North Indian, they would view this as kitchidi, which is kind of a mixture of rice and lentils that are kind of cooked down together. So a slight difference with kitchidi in my mind yeah. is it's not as uh, 
to use the word you <coughs> use, porridge like. Yes. It's more separated. Separated, yes. And uh, pongal is all uh, one mix, yes. Absolutely. And an absolute, you know, what mac and cheese to most other people <sighs> are, this is to most uh, people that love South Indian food. <laughs> I, I would take this over mac and cheese. I'm, I'm serious. It's wonderful. Um, but very I'm, different. But, uh, <laughs> 20 years ago? 20 years ago, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, I studied food from the subcontinent for 16 years, so I think 16 years ago I probably would have. Um, so as we're getting our butter melting here, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to toast these beautiful cashew pieces. Right. So we're going to put those right in. And all we're going to do is kind of just mix them around into the ghee to get that situated. We're still letting that ghee get nice and hot. And, um, and what we're looking to do is develop those flavors with the cashew. That's going to kind of brown a bit mm -hmm. and release this gorgeous kind of nutty aroma that's going to get imparted in the ghee. Um, a lot of that is that, that tartka style where yeah. we're, we're, we're blooming the spices in there. Wow. Um, and as soon as these are done, we're going to pull them out. So tatka is seasoning. Yes. So the seasoning here, we're using, you're using whole pepper and cumin seeds. And Correct. So you would say jeera and michi and... <laughs> yes, we would. Uh, so it's funny, even, even with Beej, I always say, hey, you know, this is Jira, that's not human anymore. Um, I always try to get him to speak in Hindi for it. And so uh, we're going to be using Jira or mm -hmm. cumin and uh, black pepper whole. Uh, the reason I like the whole black pepper is as this dish comes together and steams and cooks, when you bite into it, you get this gorgeous aroma of black pepper that I think is just wonderful. So, And it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where um, you can adjust the spice levels, that spiciness. Yes. To, to everyone's taste without diluting from this dish because this dish traditionally isn't very spicy. True. The spice is pepper. Yep. Salt and pepper. <laughs> and it's also good to know that this is called ven pongo, ven meaning white. Um, as opposed oh yes, to because we're not using turmeric. Correct. That's correct. Um, and there's many kinds of pongo too. There's the red pongo. Perfect. So. And if you want to add m more health value to it, yes, you can add a little bit of you adding uh, grated ginger too. Yes, grated ginger. But you could use uh, also uh, turmeric if you want to. If somebody is sick and you want to bring up. Uh, and again, person must not be sensitive to sensitive uh, sensitivity to turmeric is a thing. Yes, it definitely can be. And the other thing that's nice about this is turmeric to release the curcumin needs to bind to a fat lipid that's um, to release that curcumin yes. wow. and so that's why we have it in here like this so these are you can actually smell the difference and our food is gluten-free correct today all gluten-free just happens to be yes most indian foods are right yes yeah. so at this point we're just taking out those cashews now mm -hmm. and keeping the ghee oh smell that that smells Marvelous. Smell how the how that how it completely changed with the ghee and then the browning of the cashew. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So we're going to keep these aside because we add these at the end. Next, go in our jira or cumin and uh, black peppercorn. You sure you got enough ghee in there? <laughs> it's a it's an I important part. Smell, yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, I I tend to put like maybe two tablespoons to a cup of rice. Yeah. But I mean. The more is sometimes better. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but I think any less than that may... It, it can, yeah, it yeah. can get a little bland on that yes, side. Yes, so, yes. yeah, there's there's a good amount of ghee in there. Um, <laughs> but what we want is we want to toast some of that rice that's coming so up. So just for our audience, can you tell them, uh, are we using about one cup of um, rice mm -hmm. to half a cup of split moong dal? So how much ghee are you using to that quantity? So I'm using about two tablespoons, two, tablespoons. two generous <laughs> tablespoons, we'll say. Yes, I um, can see that, yes. <laughs> And uh, so what I want to do there is I'm, I'm letting that ghee kind of break down this. You can automatically can smell, smell the it, cumin yeah. start to to really release that beautiful scent. And this may be like two tablespoons of broken cashew nuts. Yeah. And that's about a taste, teaspoon, a little more than a teaspoon of cumin. Yep. And uh, so how much you think is there? Uh, I would say it's, a, it's, about a, it's about a teaspoon and a half of cumin and about a teaspoon of, of, uh, of uh, uh, black pepper. 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 And so to this, I'm going to add uh, about two teaspoons of oh. minced ginger. Minced ginger. And then I know you're putting a generous amount of that. And then we go in with curry leaves. And whenever you're working with curry leaves, it's very important to kind of stand back. They do splutter, uh, splatter quite a bit. So we're going to do that. And you're going to hear them pop. Very generous amount of uh, curry leaves. Might be like very. a quarter cup. Yes. I love curry leaves. And the smell of curry leaves I hitting oil. Mm. And all we're doing is we're going to wait till that kind of splatter subsides a bit. And again, you want to be careful doing this step. A lot of people, remember when BJ was first learning and I'd say, fry the curry leaves, he'd be like, oh. <laughs> Mustard seeds too. Mustard seeds, yeah, right. 
So this is our mixture of uh, rice and mung dal. Do you want to just take out the mung dal on its own if you can? Sure. I know it's a bit hard. That yellow is the mung dal. And uh, dal kind of means split or broken. Uh, so this is mung dal that is split down the middle. Uh, and it's really, really gorgeous. Um, this gives a wonderful nutrition uh, component to this. Absolutely. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start putting this in here and we're going to actually start to keep cooking this until it releases this kind of nutty aroma, right? And the fun fact is uh, the uh, moong dal is actually very good to slight inflammation too. Yes. So, um, so the, the whole one before it splits is actually green in color. Yep. So when you remove the green skin, you got the yellow. Gorgeous. I have the... Um, the water, perfect. As soon as you're ready. So you're sauteing it again. Yes. So all this is on saute mode in the instant mode in the instant pot. And this really is just a one pot meal, which is kind of gorgeous. Yes, absolutely. And so as we put that in, it's going to obviously cool down quite a bit. And so we need to get that temperature back up. So this will take a couple of minutes just as the temperature comes back up. And you'll see it stick at the bottom of the Instapot. And don't worry, because as we start to put in the water, it deglazes it. Yes, we're not using wine. We're using water to deglaze. <laughs> Crazy, right? <laughs> Perfect. So what I like to do here is just kind of use my spoon to flatten this out a bit. Just make an even layer. And I'll just leave that in there. The bottom will start to cook a little bit more than the top. And then I'll keep stirring that every 10 to 15 seconds. So can you smell that? Yes. So yeah. from that smell, mm -hmm. can you imagine what the taste is? Mm -hmm. Definitely sort of. Right? Hurt you. <laughs> sort of. There's things I've never had in there. So yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so yes. So I, I it's assume it's intriguing. I, I did have a question. Yeah. Uh, the peppercorns, do they break down? <clears throat> I mean, they go in whole. You're not grinding them. Right. So do they break down in the cooking? So they'll actually soften tremendously okay. in the cooking. And so when you get a bite of them, it, it has this nice kick. Not too spicy, mm -hmm. um, but it has this beautiful pepper aroma, which <coughs> kind of is one of the parts of this dish that's so like iconic to it. That mm -hmm. kind of black pepper bite is yep. really beautiful. And that black pepper is what's healing. <laughs> yes. Surprisingly. <laughs> so I'm going to go in with just a little bit of salt, salt at this yeah. point. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody has big salt uh, consumers in the slot. So. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> and I can feel this starting to stick, which is great. This is mm -hmm. exactly what we want. What do you think? We doing okay so far? Uh, it's just wonderful yeah. the way it's all coming together. What are you thinking, uh, Claude? That's fine with me. Perfect. Different yes. type of cooking. Oh, it's like different. Yes. It's like he's doing risotto right now, yeah, but not yeah, quite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's he's, he's done risotto with me. <laughs> And uh, if you want to measure out, we're going to need, what do we do, uh, uh, two cups into this? So we're going to go four cups. We can go, like one uh, and a half. We've got one, one cup half. of rice and half a cup of um, moong. Oh, one, uh, one and a half, so it will be three cups. Three cups. Yep. Right. The other way you, I like to measure this is really easy, is you kind of measure it so that the water covers. You know, it, it, there's, there's that as well, which you can yes. do. But for the sake of being precise, I got gotcha. you. You got it? I'll try it least I can do is pour water, right? Oh, are you kidding? We're having a blast together cooking today. <laughs> Good job. So this will be two you. cups. That will be two cups. And again, we're almost there. I can smell it. You can smell it can start to get nutty. Yes, absolutely. And this absolutely. kind of aroma. And you can feel it stick a little bit, which is gorgeous. So, um, and, you know, somebody starting to make this for the first time would probably be nervous about, you know, getting how to get the spices to the right um, brownness mm. or the right, how to get it right. Do you have any tips for that? Yeah, so uh, every spice cooks differently. Absolutely. Um, so that's the first thing to know. So cumin actually has a pretty hard shell. Um, it's actually in the carrot family. And so it can take a lot of heat. To roast cumin correctly, you actually need to take it to a point where it's starting to just almost smoke. And uh, the difference between burnt cumin and, not, and roasted cumin is a very small, thin line. Very, very fine line. Too. So, <laughs> so yes, I'm talking for the for somebody for the first time, right? Yeah. Cooking so for the first time uh, it, with, with spices. It, it's definitely, it can be a little tricky, but if you start to see it, uh, like keep your heat on like a medium to medium high. Right. That's what I always say. And it's easy to pull it off the heat if you think it's getting too hot. You don't want cumin to be black. You want it to be dark brown. Yeah, because then it's very bitter. Very bitter, You don't exactly. want something very bitter. You want something nutty. And I, you know, even Western, you know, restaurants, they'll, they'll, if they're not familiar with food from the subcontinent, mm -hmm. they don't really roast cumin properly. You always have this kind of, when you don't roast it properly, it doesn't have this smokiness to it. Yes. It has this kind of light bitterness to it. And we're just about there. All right, so we're going to pour that water in. 
And you want another cup, correct? Correct. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Good. Perfect. We're going to pour that in. And all I'm going to do is just scrape the sides and scrape the bottom real quick and you'll feel it all release. So what's your other trick uh, to, uh, to eyeball the water from the rice? Um, so I'll do it about a half an inch above the rice. Okay. Uh, the way that you can do it, a lot of times you can measure by sticking your finger in and it'll come right up there, right? Right, yes. So let's see, which finger are you going to be using? The middle finger? Or the <laughs> finger? <laughs> I use the, the pointer finger. <laughs> um, and so that's all set. We, we scraped set. the bottom. Uh, we're just going to put this beautiful little hat on. We're going to turn the venting valve to, to, to block all the venting so it holds in that pressure. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pressure cook this and I do it for nine minutes. Nine minutes? That's good. Yep. And I'll do that on just a normal pressure mm -hmm. and then I'll let the pressure release naturally. Oh, naturally. Okay. Got yep. you. So yes, then all this other stuff should be ready by then. Perfect. All right, BJ, we're back to our cake. Yes. Yeah, so we have our milk cooled a little bit. We have a preheated oven at 350. Good job. Yeah. So we're going to add our milk to our Dry ingredients. Make sure these are nice and mixed. Smells good, right? Mm. Butter always does. Butter and coconut. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, do you like coconut too? I love coconut. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Not many people like coconut. Really? Yes. Oh. I don't know if they've had it the right way, then. That's my theory. I like coconut, just right out of the shell. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that is the best. Keep it in here. Yeah, I think because of the suji, we need a little more liquid, right? Yes. So that the thirsty. suji will uh, absorb that liquid. So it's more or less like eating suji. Mm. <laughs> yep. Do you do one is to two or, two or one is to three? I do one is to two mostly, and then add a little bit as needed. I'll give us a final mix. How do you think you want to plate it eventually? Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> would you prefer pistachios or almonds? I think almonds go with suji. I think almonds would be really good. Pistachio is my favorite nut, though. Oh, okay. So we'll just go ahead and fill these. Oh, it's taking more than a quarter cup, but I guess these are big cup. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do just a little bit more then. Uh -huh. We're going to get a little bit of a rise. So. Yes, you are going to get So you always, we always put it like three quarters of that, yes. All right, because we don't have more cupcake cavities in here, we're going to make that into a little loaf cake or something. So that, uh, that we... We're using all the batter. We're using all the batter. No waste. Absol no, absolutely no waste. And we just have some slivered almonds we're going to put on top here. Beautiful. Are those raw, BJ? Yes, these are raw now. They'll get nice and toasted as we bake. Mm -hmm. And you can toast them ahead of time, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and no, because you, got, you, you need, um, the cake needs to, to, it'll cook with the cake. Yeah. It may burn. Right. We definitely don't want them to burn. No. Plenty of almonds on all of them. Yes, that's more than enough. Yeah. Okay, and you're going to put it in the oven? Yes. We time it for about 20 minutes for now. One and minute. that's at 350? 350, yes. Perfect. Moderate oven, 350. Perfect. Right. Absolutely. So, we're getting onto our idlis? I'm ready. Are you ready? Yes, absolutely. All right. All right, so we are super excited to, uh, to make two wonderful things here. We're going to make idli, and we are going to make something called gotsu or goju. Um, and the goju is this wonderful accompaniment that you can have to the pongol. Um, it's also uh, one of the, the kind of sauces that we put on our idli chat whenever we do an atma dinner. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring beej in, and uh, this wonderful idli batter is something that we actually make all the time in-house. Uh, a lot of times you can buy it, and it's wonderful batter. See, this is perfect idli batter. A little bit on the cost side. Thank you. And you said you did like a three to one? Yeah, uh, so yeah, we always do three is to one. Um, the, for those of you who might not be familiar, that's uh, three parts rice, we do idli rice, to uh, one part urad dal. Okay, and urad dal is a little white uh, dal that's, uh, you use a whole one with the skin, without the skin? Uh, so without skin, <laughs> um, and we typically have the split urad dal. Yeah. Right, and the, the, if you had skin, then you would have seen black, black. little speckles on yep. that. And this is now uh, like a dumpling, a steamed dumpling. Exactly. You called um, in for some reason. Yeah, I? so we're going to have Beej kind of put these in. Um, and it takes about, it, uh, so I ferment these actually in the Instapot. Um, and I'll ferment them for about 10 hours in the yogurt setting. Um, the reason is it's nice because you want that, that sourness to the idli, yes. which is a really important part. And these will fluff up and be just wonderful. And you fermented it, uh, which is a very important process, which is very, very much uh, very good for our gut. Perfect. Yes, so um, we were saying these are um, dumplings. 
Yeah, they're a type of dumpling. <laughs> it's almost like a dumpling. Um, the steaming technique is kind of akin yes. to that, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very, it's, it's wonderful because it's this beautiful blank canvas. Yeah, um, absolutely. Italy is very pure and fluffy and delicious, and when you steam them, they become a little like cloud-like. Yes. Um, which is a signature component to that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a chop. Um, chop actually comes from the word chutna, which means to lick. Um, and our chat for this is one that we do a lot of times at Atma, which is our pop-up restaurant. Yes, we forgot to mention the beginning. Kids uh, started off Atma, which is, uh, means soul. Yes, So yeah. they cook from their soul, they feed from their soul, and present everything soulfully. It is a, uh, a labor of love, so we don't bring in any powdered spices whatsoever. We grind every single solitary spice uh, in-house when we do these. Um, and so these will steam for about 12 minutes, and then we're going to take them out, kind of let them cool a bit, and then we actually fry these in, uh, in ghee. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, we'll start to add podi, um, which is, podi is this wonderful kind of masala blend uh, with lentils and wonderful things on it. We work with a company called Podi Life. Uh, which they've made ponies Very for nice. generations. Oh, yes. And so we get to help support them. Uh, and then we're going to toss it in a little bit of gotsu, which we're, we're going to make right now. Right. And uh, the act literal meaning of pori is powder. Powder, yep. <laughs> so a mixture of different spices to make a powder. Yep, exactly. So in this pot, I have ginger oil, which is uh, unroasted sesame oil. Sesame oil. A lot of people in the West might know sesame oil as that toasted mm -hmm. sesame oil. This is not toasted. So toasted is typically to round up at the end. This Correct. one is, you, you're making it hot, you're going to be having crazy, I mean, the heat is going to be high for you to toast your, or roast your masala. Exactly. Or bloom your spices. Bloom the spices, yep. Yeah. Uh, this is one of our dabas. We have, a, we have dabas everywhere. Daba basically translates to case. Um, we'll have different dabas for mm -hmm. different applications. We decided to build most of our, of the spices we're going to do in here just today. So we got black mustard seed. That's going to go right in. Any particular brand of mustard seed? Um, so I like Swad. <laughs> like okay. they, do, they do a pretty good job. I, I didn't mean uh, brand in that sense. There's Andhra mustard seed. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I, I like the Andhra mustard seed because they big flavor, big bold flavor. Um, I put about two teaspoons in there. I'm going to have about a teaspoon and a half of meti seed or fenugreek. Fenugreek seed. Um, when those toast, they give this lovely mm -hmm. kind of like beautiful aroma to them. What we're doing here is you can see the smoke start to, to billow a little bit yes. at that point. I know the oil is very hot. Yes. You don't want to get it rip roaring too much. Do you hear that sound? Yes. That's that classic sound. That smile, that means it's good. Yes, the mustard seed is uh, splattering. It's blooming all right. So what I like to do is um, I'll get ready to go in with these, but first curry leaves. And again, these are going to splatter. You know, um, the curry leaves are really, really, really healthy for you. So if you can get a, ch a habit of really chopping them up, yes, then you know it can be eaten and it's be really good for your health. Of course, it's still giving you health benefits. But and I, uh, so we call this a brinois cut. Um, basically, oh. what we're going to do is we're going to put about a tablespoon of chopped or brinois to ginger in there, and that's going to start to release this gorgeous aroma. So ginger, what you're saying is the way it's cut. The, the way it's cut. The name of the way. Typically that's brinois. So we, I, my background is a lot of very fine dining French food, yeah. and. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, I got to bring a lot of He's those got techniques. He's my ginger. He's using my ginger. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So what we're doing oh, yes, here. Yes, he cut the ginger, but I think it's yours. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're doing here is I'm taking off the heat just for a second. I don't want this to burn. Yeah. Um, ginger, if it burns, gets very, very bitter. Mm -hmm. um, so next thing I want to do is we're starting to build a couple other things in here. Can you smell the oil? Yes, yes, yes. That's so these are green chilies. Green chilies chopped up. Harimurchi. And then yes, just remember, Mike is going to join us to eat, so we don't put too much of chili. Not too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see that face. Uh, this is rasam powder. Oh, uh, okay. You so made your own rasam powder? Always. So what did you eat? What did you add to your masala? To uh, make your so powder? it's kind of a blend of a bunch of things. Um, one of the things that I really like in rasam powder, especially when I make it for this, so we make two kinds of rasam powder. Mm -hmm. One There's kind of rasam kinds, powder... There's many yes. kinds. This rasam powder, we go a little bit heavier on some of those warming spices. Okay. Just for this application. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So do you remember, yes, our pongali, pongali is ready. I can hear it beeping. So now I want to go in. Can you get me uh, about two cups of water, please? Mm -hmm. So this is just... The so cup is here. The oh, water perfect. is here. Mm -hmm. So we've got some gorgeous tamarind here. Yes, So see that. What? We're going to try to go in. Tamarind. Okay. 
Uh, you want to give uh, the chef a little bit to taste? Please, that would be wonderful. So with this tamarind, this tamarind is very, very sweet and sour. It has this gorgeous kind of component to it. And Thank you. You're welcome. What we're trying to do here now is, once that tamarind goes in, we're going to throw in a little bit of jaggery. Jaggery is sugar, sweet. Yeah. And so it's... Do you want to taste something? Sweet and spicy? This is, is going to be like a sweet. sweet and sour kind of sauce. Okay. So I got about two, about two tablespoons of jaggery. Uh, jaggery typically comes from palm. Um, the other thing is if you don't have jaggery, you can substitute it with brown sugar. It does or work. Or coconut sugar. Or coconut sugar, absolutely. Coconut sugar is even better for you. So jaggery can also, uh, it started off from sugar cane. Yes, yeah. And South Africa was noted for sugar cane and Mahatma Gandhi was the one that insisted on jaggery out there. And I love that because food, like to be a really good chef, you need to kind of be a history nerd. That's the reality of it. So uh, we put in that rasam powder, we put in about two tablespoons of jaggery, I put in about two cups of water, and now I'm gonna let this come to a boil and reduce a little bit. It takes about 15 minutes and it'll thicken up quite nicely. Okay. Yeah, it almost has, it, it's neat being a Westerner who studied this for 16 years, I equate a lot of things to what I grew up with. And so this reminds me of brown sugar, yeah, which is typically absolutely. white sugar with molasses. You spend a long time in India? No. No. Ma uh, new, new, uh, Nashua. Yeah. yeah, but did you you went you went in India, no? No, that, I thought you did. I was supposed to be there in November, and mm. uh, my girlfriend went into the hospital, so I left the plane. Mm. And uh, so this November, BJ and I will actually be going. Uh, so finally, we uh, we get to be there for for a while. I study over there. My guru is a guy named uh, Dr. Kurosh Dalal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you didn't go then? That's too bad. No, I've it, it's been crazy. It's this has been such a big part of my life. So how did you learn all those uh, spices and recipe? So I had this wonderful mentor in Nashville, New Hampshire. Her name was Indra, okay. and uh, she taught me this. We catered together for a long time, okay. and now I get to study with fine dining chefs all throughout India, which mm. is a blessing. I'm mm. beyond humbled. So yes, now you got it to the boiling point. Right. So we want, if you can see, I just kind of lower it a little bit, mm -hmm. and we wanted to get. So what we're doing is when you're releasing that those bubbles that did hard boil, see all the steam coming up? Yes. That's releasing that vapor. Mm -hmm. But it's also cooking the sugar. Yes. Same thing like you do with the caramel, mm -hmm. right? Same sort of concept where you're releasing that water and the caramel is, is going to be developed by the thickening <coughs> of the sugar. Right. So. And, um, uh, and typically the gotsu is made with also eggplant and... Uh, you can do tomato. Tomato, yes. yep. Um, I love the tamarind gotsu because I love that, that sweet and sour mm -hmm. component. And since we're using it for the pongal yes. and we're going to be using it for another application, we didn't want to make it too masala dar, too spicy. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I, I understand totally. But I mean, this is a good, I can I smell it and I can see it. I mean, it's going to be tasty and really good too. And that's like I didn't know about it, but just uh, talking. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's really simple to do. See, like that's the thing. We want people to replicate this because yes. it's so simple. Absolutely. So simple. It's like mm -hmm. our cake, right, BJ? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Coming along here. And we're almost there on the pongal, we're almost there on the cake, we're almost there on the idli. Right, so we're almost ready to serve, correct? Yeah. It's very shortly. Yeah, convection's really nice. It speeds up the process a lot, yes, too. Yes, um, So I'm always careful. I'm going to check the idli. Go ahead. I moved back. I didn't want the steam to hit me, and it yeah, looked beautiful. Nice. And we're almost there. Right. Yeah, those idlis look really, really nice. They look very nice. They look perfect, actually. And it's such an art, like learning, and I, believe me, I'm still very much a student. I cannot say this enough. I, uh, you know, to get an idli like that has taken me so many years. And honestly, you, I can still rip it apart and be like, there's room to grow. Mm. So <laughs> the way that I typically make I'm idli sorry, batter is sorry. there's a, a ratio that Do we typically call three is to one. Yeah. That means three parts mm -hmm. rice into one part uradal or black skin lentils. Um, what we do is we need to soak those separately. We need to soak them because the, the surface ratio is different. So I take the rice and I soak that for about eight to nine hours. The dal, I soak separately, but I also put meti seed, which is this beautiful seed right here that we have in our gotsu. Um, so this seed, meti seed, um, needs to get soaked with that uro dal, and that soaks for about four hours. From there, I take that and I put that in a fridge. I want that to be very, very cold. Um, the other thing that I like to do, especially when it comes to idli, is add flat rice or poha. Um, and I do that right before I start to blend this. After the, those time limits are up, I'll take the rice and I will blend all that rice. I'll get rid of a good amount of that water. I save a little bit of it. Blend that rice until that rice has a little bit of texture to it. If you're making this for idli, you want a little bit of that wonderful kind of texture to it. Then I take that, put that in, into a mixing bowl. Then 
I'll blend all of the uradal separately. Um, then I fold that into that. The reason is we want that uradal to be really cold. It helps with the fluffiness of the idli. Um, then that whole thing gets mixed together. We t wash your hands, you do it by hand. Uh, it's a very important thing. You don't want to do this with a spoon. The activation of your hand um, is a really important part. It starts to warm the batter, um, which brings that fermentation process in. From there, I place it in an Instapot, uh, which I've always done, it's really easy, on a yogurt setting uh, for 10 hours. And then the next thing you know, it has that beautiful setting to it. I don't add salt until I'm ready, until the batter's done. If you add salt before the fermentation process, it'll overly ferment. True. And um, <laughs> uh, which kind of blend are you using? Vitamix? Yeah, so I, I always use and a Vitamix. And that's why you're putting it in the fridge beforehand, because exactly. you don't want to heat it up? Yep, we don't want to heat it Those up. Those are the little things we need. <laughs> you know, those we forget the, to say that those will make a big difference. Yeah. And that's the thing, it, in, in a lot of, when I was growing up, a lot of the fine dining cooking, it's very, it's, it's rhythmic, right? Yeah. Where you're like, okay, we need to concasse this, we need to do that. Like, it's very, it's very rigid. Mm -hmm. With Indian cuisine, Indra would always say, I'd be like, how much jira do I put in? And she'd be like, enough. Or she'd do, yes. she'd do yes. these. And these things don't translate to, to us One in the West enough. at yes. all. Yes. Um, so it was, it took me so long to learn that. Well, you want to, to be fair, a pinch doesn't necessarily. <laughs> yes, my I have very pinch, big hands. Like my, my pinch, pinch is, different. is different from somebody else's pinch. Yes. So yes, we can just leave this to cool. Yep, and that's just about done. So we're gonna take our idli after this is all set. We'll take our idli. I'm gonna have Bead scrape these out. We're gonna fry them, and we're gonna be ready to go. It's gorgeous. Well, I feel like they came out pretty good, right? They did. They <laughs> absolutely did. It's like almost. Per it's perfect. Not almost. It is perfect. Where did you get your idli pot stand from in case our viewers need one? Uh, so I work with this small little grocery store in Nashua called Easy Indian Grocery. Oh, okay. And uh, I buy all my stuff through them because they're a little oh, family-owned okay. grocery store. Is that the same one that Indira used to be part of? So Indira actually used to own a grocery store. Not that one. Not that oh, one. Okay. She shops there now, so we run into each other all ah, the time. What's it called again? Indian? Uh, Easy Indian. Easy Indian. So you're making a lemon, mint, ginger drink right nice yeah so shall we yeah. enough for all of us yeah cool. so just like four cups mm. nice maybe six so we're starting with some water yes 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 absolutely some water this is going to be nice and refreshing very refreshing yes probably four 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 cups of water you can reach so i'd say about half let's start with that mm. we have it go on mm. start right about there it's gorgeous so we put like um, half a cup, half of this would be like half a cup of sugar and half a cup of water. Yep. To four cups of uh, water. water. And we're going to be squeezing some lemon. Yeah, how many should we do? Four? A quarter cup of lemon will be too much. Uh, I think that'll be good. Uh, that Let's should be see. about a amount. Right. Yeah. You're almost there right there. So we might be just good with one lemon. One lemon. Yeah, it's a nice big lemons, right? Very juicy. Very juicy. That right in. So we've got water. We've got a quarter cup of lemon juice in there. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add some mint. Yes. Uh, do you want a pistol and mortar with the for the mint? Yeah. That probably be best. All right. Now um, BJ is definitely getting on with the drink. So we put four cups of water, maybe half a cup or so of uh, yep, a syrup, a, a simple syrup. And now you're adding a little bit of mint, mint. that you are. What the, what's the word for it? Uh, Macerate, muddle. Right? Muddle. Muddle. Yes. And you can take this and put it in your water and you'll get lovely uh, mint in your house yes. within a week or two weeks. Yeah, so I got about two bunches. We'll just kind of beat these leaves up a little bit, awaken all the essential oils. Mm -hmm. So BJ is making this up as we go. So <laughs> we appreciate that. Yeah. We'll go ahead and put that in. And like I said earlier on, we don't need to add sugar if you want wanting to stay away. All you need to do is slice a little bit of onion. I'm sorry, not even onion. Slice a little bit of lemon. Uh, do the same thing he's done with the mint and a little bit it of ginger in your water. Voice, Let it infuse and then you just pour that out too. Yep. Yep. And if some of them, somebody wants it that way, we can do that too now. Okay, so that's it, right? Yeah. And so a finished uh, drink. A finished drink. Do you taste to see if it's okay? Yes, let's do that. I got a nice spoon here. Let's see where we're at. Whether it needs more mint, I mean more sugar, more. Um, 
I think we need a little bit more lemon and a little more ginger syrup. Oh, nice. So we'll go with another half a lemon. So I was right, quarter cup would have been right, right? So two lemons for four cups of water. Yep. So there's our cupcakes ready. Wow. The, can you smell that? Yeah. It smells delicious. Thank you, BJ. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're there. Okay. So you want to pour some for our good uh, guests yes, out there? Yes. Let me just... So if you want to make um, it spicy, you can even put some ginger around the rim. Am I right? Yeah. That'd be gorgeous. And what else would you suggest around the rim? Uh, around the rim, you could actually do a little bit of... If you did some honey, then you can roll it in oh, like yes. cashmere chili powder. With oh, a little bit of salt. That is excellent then idea. Then you really have your Indian mojito, right? Yes. <laughs> or your, your margarita. Yes. <laughs> Gentlemen. Look at this. Look, Look at for you. Oh my God, thank you. For you. Just for us, wow. Just for you guys. I wanted you in the picture. <laughs> oh, I can go back. <laughs> mm. And these will be for us. Mm -hmm. One for you. Thank you. Yes. And we shall cheer through. Chef Let's Keith. see this be done. I'm going to come in right yes. here. Hot, careful. The smell, as soon as it comes off. Uh, there you go, the, po the pongal is now perfect. So you made this all come together. Our idli, our soji cake, gotsu, pongali, they go together. We're plating our little drink. Absolutely, and w typically I like, I like gotsu on it. Um, uh -huh. What we'll do is we're gonna put this to the side just in case, because it, it tends to have a little bit spicier of a kick. Yes for people. Yes, yes, yes. So we'll put this to the side. Um, okay. And then I think the important things that I really like on my idli is ah, podi. Ah, yeah. Uh, if you want to op open that one? Yeah, absolutely. And then we'll open this one. So this is just called South Indian Spice Blend Podi. <laughs> yeah, so this is Podi. Crispy nice. garlic. This is crispy garlic. And you got now? I've got lento the, one yeah, the lento one. Um, so this is Podi Life. They're a brand uh, out of Atlanta. Um, wonderful mother and daughter mm -hmm. who've been making podi for many, many years. Yes, I listened to the oh. podcast that you had. So good. <laughs> so good. Yeah, it smells nice. very, very, very fresh. Very nice. Yes. Simply, there's a couple ways that we can do this. Typically, we'll put a little gingerly oil mm -hmm. and then we'll mix the podi in it. If you want to just a little bit of oil in here. And so, many ways to eat idli. Uh, what we'll do here, again, this is that gingerly oil, the, which is the uh, sesame, oil. sesame that's not roasted. And then we'll just mix these together. Beautiful. With you today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So here we go. So we have done our full meal. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to, we could break it to appetizers, main course, and dessert. Mm -hmm. Or we could just make this a main course, that the main course, and that's for tea. Perfect. Perfect. Right? Perfect. <laughs> and those are gorgeous. Those gorgeous. are gorgeous. gorgeous. So do you want to put one on a plate and show our audience how you will eat the gotsu with the... Sure. Um, do we need some scones? Gorgeous. What do you think of the drink? Um, Very oh, good. Very, Very good. good. Okay. And the thing I like about the cashew nuts, besides giving the protein and I mean adding to the protein because we already got the protein from the moong dal, mm -hmm. the cashews actually give a very nice, also more protein. Yes, and, so uh, much. And it's just uh, delicious. And um, so you eat the pongal like that and then you put your idli on the side of the plate. Yeah, so I'll take an idli, I'll put that on the side of the plate over there. And it's nice, I always check the idli, I think a mark of a good idli is those pockets all yes. on the bottom. Oh yes, Really absolutely. good, spongy, it and feels it's well. And very, very light, which is very a very light. big plus. Yes. And then I love gotsu, um, so I'll take a spoonful of this and I'll put this right on mm -hmm. uh, the pongal. And I'll put a little bit on the side too, just in case I want to dip. Yes. And then the same thing with the potty, you put that on the side, correct? Exactly. So a little bit of, what I'll do is I'll just mix it a little bit. If you see it kind of set a little bit, um, grab a spoon, give it a stir. And then I have that beautiful mixture right there. So you choose either or. Yeah, you can choose either or, but when you go back for seconds, because nobody can eat just one idli, <laughs> yes, then you get true. to, uh, you don't look like this by eating one idli. <laughs> <laughs> so you have an, I mean, most people have an average of two idlis, correct? Yes. Yeah. But I mean, I know people, I mean, if it's like fresh, hot of that pot, it, you can go and go and not realize how many you had. And they sneak up on you. They can yes. be filling. Do you want to, one French chef to another French chef? Oh, please. Thank you, chef. <laughs> no, no, no. 
<laughs> to her first. You try. Please let Please us try. know. Okay, oh, well, thank you very much. Let us know what you think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I'm not the only one, yeah. Yes, no, he's oh, yeah, well, not. We're all waiting to see if you lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, you'll, you'll detect this kind of sweet and sour, yeah, sour kind of, yeah. uh, from the sauce and, uh, and everything that comes together is just wonderful. Oh, that's delicious, yeah. So it, it, very, it has that breakfast quality yes, to yes, it, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's mm. wonderful. So both those foods can be eaten as breakfast, which we forgot to say. Mm. Yes. Because it's t this is a typical Indian breakfast as well. And that's we very good, uh, very good soup. Uh, thank you, Chef. Oh, yeah. Soup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of? Yeah, it, uh, it's just this kind of like wonderful yeah. flavor. And that, yes. Yes, that's, that's exactly how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So you'll see it's this spongy texture yes. that soaks up everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's wonderful. Something you've never eaten before. No, it? no, wonderful. I'm glad we gave you the pleasure of trying it. Mm. And the, the flavor of the sauce is different with different taste, different flavor. Exactly, mm. yep. And it's just this wonderful canvas. And yeah. a lot of times mm. we'll take these and we'll fry them yeah. after. And that gives another, you know, like the, if you were doing mm. um, like the sokarat that's at the bottom of a paella, yeah. you mm. get that sort of texture in these as well, which is wonderful. Oh, the texture. You, you deep fry them? Yeah, you, um, typically when we do idli chat, we'll deep fry them and then we'll start adding all those other components to it. That's well. what I thought we were doing today. We were, and then we ran out of time. No, <laughs> no, no I mean, you, you can oh, still do that. No, no, no. Oh, no I mean, like another five minutes or so we got, we can just do that to just show another variation. Yeah, we, uh, no. anything you want to do? Yes, I mean, the, yeah, she's right here. <clears throat> Let's fry a couple real quick. You want to try them this way? I do. Uh, you got it. And I'll, so what I'll do is I'm going to put a little sauce on the side for you. That way, if it's a little too spicy, you don't. Because these two, no spice whatsoever. All right. We thought we are rounding up, but we forgot that we started off telling our audience that we're making an idli chaat. We did not want to disappoint you, so we're going to finish off with our idli chaat. Yeah, so we have our uh, lovely steamed idlis. Uh, I'm just heating up some, um, some buffalo ghee, and we're going to fry it until they're nice, crispy, golden brown. Uh, we usually toss them with the poti and then serve with the, the various sauces, which is personally my favorite way to eat it. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a very different experience. Idli is so wonderful on its own just like this. And if you were looking to, you know, if there's health issues going on, you want to have it this way. If your belly's upset, you want to have it this way. Plain, plain without the sauces. Exactly. Yes, yes. Um, this yes. way. Both those foods are very good for healing. Yes, absolutely. Very, very plain and simple. Yes. Especially people with digestive issues. Mm -hmm. These are yes. so wonderful. Fermented for foods are always good for those issues. Yep. Yes. And what are you thinking over there? How do you like it? We never very, got very to nice. Is it too too spicy? Nope. No. 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 It's delicious. All right. See, it's not, not hurting him. See. Not all Indian food is spicy. No. No. <laughs> you need that spice. That makes it um, You need the spice. These, yep. these are a very nice vehicle too. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. because it, like you said, it's a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And so we're going to make you our version of idli chaat, and you're going to see the same idli transformed dramatically, mm -hmm. dramatically, and it, a whole new experience, but still the same exact kind of philosophy there. So mm -hmm. go for it. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's good. Do you want to do... Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. So he's deep frying the uh, yeah, I can see idli. That. Yeah, they come out in this nice, beautiful, you know, beautiful brown. It's mm -hmm. a nice, a different taste altogether. Altogether, yeah. You still have that really nice soft spongy inside, inside with that nice crispy outside. No, we can do this one. Yeah. But that's the beauty with food. Food is about sharing. Yeah. Food is about giving expression. And, and Th Thomas Keller, who owns Per Se and, and French Laundry, always says that we cook. You know the French Laundry? Yes. Have yeah, you been there? Oh, yes. Oh yeah. My God. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful recipe. Everybody. Wonderful chef. That's my favorite. We see, especially in New York and, and across the world, especially in the UK, we're seeing fine dining chefs looking at the subcontinent and saying, hey, this <clears> deserves <throat> its day as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. Take these and I will build us that chart. Hey. So our chart is first put some um, very laid out, the uh, actual idli is very fancy and he's drizzled some co um, yogurt. Mm -hmm. But you made a special mixture of yogurt, correct? Yeah, we did a sweetened yogurt. We typically sweet it, sweeten it with um, a little bit of confectioner sugar. Okay, and this is homemade yogurt? Yes, always, always homemade dahi. Okay. Try to at least. That one looks perfect. Yes, it does. So this is when you get like kind of chat, it's this like, Beautiful, thrown together, wonderful, gorgeous flavors that are big and bold. Uh, this is kind of a cilantro, uh, cilantro chutney that we do. Um, and uh, it's, it's really gorgeous because I, I kind of incorporate some different ingredients that you would typically than a green chutney. Green chutney consists of normally like 
um, mint, mint. Uh, mint cilantro. Um, you'll have uradal typically, yes. jira, things like that. Uh, what I do with this chutney is a little different. We actually take some vinegars and we use them to kind of heighten the flavor profile. Mm -hmm. um, you wanna grab the sev? Mm -hmm. And so we like to make this very free form and fun. A lot of cilantro, a lot of fun, bold flavors here. Just a little bit more. We want to make this really just pop with flavor. Um, <laughs> so t typically this is how chaat looks. You know, you have yeah. the sauces and you have all these different flavorings. And uh, yes, he's bringing some crunchiness in the way of uh, serve. And then we also sprinkle it with podi. Mm -hmm. um, podi and idli are just like best friends. They, uh, <laughs> as you know now. Yes. And then we finally top it with sev, which is basically uh, chickpea flour that's kind of fried. It gives this gorgeous little right. texture to it. And this is something you kind of see in our restaurant. Kind of a, an upscale version of this. So we made a feast today. And uh, did. thank you to you. It's just an honor being here. Such an honor to have you, but you're going to tell us exactly what you've done again. I, I will. Uh, so we did this beautiful idli. Uh, again, all the batters from scratch on that one. Uh, then we turned it into this lovely idli chaat uh, by frying it in ghee and adding some wonderful components like chutneys on it and that gotsu. Uh, you did these gorgeous suji. Can, uh, BJ did, yes. Oh, I was just the, I was just the hands. <laughs> <laughs> they just look so wonderful. They do look wonderful. Uh, and then finally we did this gorgeous pongol. Um, wonderful kind of aromatics into that and accompanying it with that tamarind style goju. Yes, and you have this poris that you've cooked out of the package, which is a very nice company to shop with. And this is called sev, S-E-V, mm -hmm. which is made with chickpea flour, made into a little batter with a little bit of salt, and then it's put through a little machine that comes out like vermicelli mm -hmm. and deep fried. Yep, and it's so, so good. So good. It's so, so easy to make, so easy, so good. Deep fried, but you know. I'm sure they'll find some way soon. <laughs> but this is a delicious meal. In spite of the deep frying, we have some very healthy options out here. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, good for everybody. Absolutely. And, and most important. Most important. I mean, made with love, right? Absolutely. <laughs> that's feeding the soul. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, Kate, for being here. Thank you. Thank you, PJ. Thank and you. So, and our drink. Oh, can't forget about the drink. The drink is, is just delicious. Maybe I should be a bartender. <laughs> Lemon, ginger, mint, mint. and water. Yep. We had some simple syrup. Yep, that simple syrup. And, <laughs> and it's so refreshing for all this. And if, you know, this is typically a fusion meal mm. because yep. chaat is not South Indian. Right, North Indian. North yeah. Indian. Cakes are not South Indian. North Indian, yep. Yes. Suji is North Indian. Mm -hmm. Rava is... South Indian. Yep. So we turn what could have been rava in a pudding mm -hmm. into a cake. Ah. Almost. And it's brilliant. Simple. Simple. And just delicious. Delicious. Right? To that. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank Cheers. you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Yes, thank you so Cheers. much for joining us. Oh, thank you for inviting thank us. Thank you for feeding us. Yes. Claude. Yeah. Mm. Mike Gowing. BJ. <coughs> Keith. I'm your host, Hamsha Naidu. Thank you for joining us on Flavorful Eats, always available on YouTube. Thank you again. Thanks a million. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Enjoy.